Ahoy, this is Denka. I have introduced Ibodo Photo Editor on this channel in the past. They are back with very new, exciting features that I'm going to test in this video. And for those who are not familiar with this software, it's a time-saving tool geared towards professionals. It's packed with features, and I only wish it was available many years ago, as it would honestly save me a lot of time. This video is sponsored by Ibodo. I went ahead and imported first batch. The first three photos I'm going to work on are these outdoor photos of Polina. I took them on overcast, very windy and cold day. She was a trooper handling such a difficult shoot. The base is good, but let's create some dramatic, colorful image. The first thing I see that needs to be fixed is the horizon level. Let's pull out a crop tool and rotate the image by dragging the corner. Let's confirm. And now the image looks way better. Next, I'm going to use AI color looks feature. It's a bit different from filters. It will adjust the color of the photo based on the look you select without losing the original essence. Because I like colorful photos, I'm going to go with vivid light. Let me show you before and after. As you can see, the photo is no longer dual. There is now way more contrast, especially in the grass area. I'm going to tone it down as I think it was a little bit too much. How is 63? Okay, let's close this down. Let's zoom in 100% and check what else can we fix here. The skin looks good. We can do some minor fixes there though. The fabric could be smoothened out a bit. The first thing I'm going to do is enable body blemish and I'm going to keep it at 100%. It's not a close-up image, but rather the whole body. If it was a close-up image on the face, I would most likely tone it down a bit as I don't want an extremely strong effect. I'm also going to enable freckles and acne to see if anything has changed. Not much, she really doesn't need that retouching. Let's check what has changed. I'm going to look at the whole body and let's start with the leg here. So there are some dark areas that are now gone. Let's move up. I see big changes around the armpit area. Let's zoom out and look at the whole image one more time. The last thing I want to change on the model is the fabric. I want to make that a bit smoother. So let's go to clothes and accessories, touch up panel and enable de-wrinkle clothing. I see a big change there. Not really that it really smoothed out the fabric, but I also see it is less see-through and that I actually like. If I zoom out, you can see the whole change. And if you go much closer now at 100%, you can see that, yes, the skirt is less see-through. That is actually better. I'm still going to ease up a bit on the de-wrinkle tool. The last step for this photo would be going to background adjustment panel, where I'm going to change the sky. That will change the photo drastically, you'll see. Because her outfit has such a warm color, I'm going to go with sunset and sunrise skies. I'm really liking this one as there is also a color of her dress in the sky. First thing I'm going to do is adjust scenery color and match it to the sky. I want the model to blend in a bit, but I don't want her to fade. She still needs to stand out. There is one more adjustment called human color. I will do the same here. I'm going to add a little bit of a sky blur adjust brightness, saturation, and temperature. I like this. All right, a little bit of a workflow. Instead of editing the other two images separately, I'm going to create a preset with all these changes made to this photo. Let's call this Dramatic Sky 1. All I have to do now is select another photo, go to Preset panel on the left, and with one click, the next photo is done. And let's do the same thing with the other one. The first set of the photos was taken outdoors, but now let me actually pull out photos taken indoors in the studio. 
portrait photos. Again, I have pulled out a batch of photos. Let's choose one of these portrait filters as a good starting point, but tone it down a bit. Next up would be the typical skin retouching and enabling freckle and acne to clean the skin, even though she really does have quite clean skin. The problem I see in this photo is the face shine. Luckily, they have this tool here as well. I'm going to tone it down a little bit as I want to keep a little bit of a shine. We don't want to end up with a dull look. She doesn't have any eye bags, but I see this new tool here, so let's see what it does. Oh yeah, it brightened up the area below her eyes quite a bit. Let's adjust the smile line with a smile line tool. I really like how they have tool for every single wrinkle and line as it seems. It's so much faster to do it all here instead of manually. Let's go to skin retouching and play a bit with smooth skin retouching which is dodge and burn tool, face skin smoothing. I'm going to enable only a little bit. I still want to see the real person there. There are so many tools there. It can get a little bit overwhelming. I see so many new tools added, all these little new signs. When it comes to photo retouching, it really depends on your personal taste. What you like, what you don't like, what you think should be removed and what should not. Some people prefer more natural look, others prefer very much over retouched. It really depends on the taste. I'm going to continue with working on her eyes a bit. Let's zoom in 100% and let's remove those red veins. Let's brighten the eyes a little bit. The cool thing is that you can adjust each eye separately and you can actually also adjust from what I see here, iris, um, all these iris reflections and iris flare. One thing I always loved when I was going through fashion magazines is to read the lighting setup of the photographers through the eyes. As you can see from this photo, I had two lights in the front, one main light on the left and then smaller, softer light on the right. Gentle smile is next. I've tested this feature before and I kind of liked it. Let's see if we can use it in this photo as well, as she is quite serious here. I'm definitely not going to use it all the way 100%, but a little bit is good. Another big problem I see are straight hairs. Many women don't like them in the photos. They always ask that to be removed. Let's use remove stray hair tool. Here is before and here is after. Very nice, clean look. Let's look at the overall image. Here is before and here is after. I think I'm good there when it comes to the model. The background, however, can be much better. First of all, if you go to background adjustments, you can remove the background completely. That is great if you, for example, need to make a poster or need to add this photo to a website where it overlays certain boxes and other images. I'm loving that. You can change the background to plain white, any other color. I'm going to stay with basic gray. And now let me show you how we can apply all changes to the rest of the images very quickly. Simply select all photos and hit the sync button on the right. And now you can see that all images have been edited. Let's undo those changes with the undo button. As I want to show you how you can do that with a keyboard shortcut, simply Select the edited photo, copy the changes by hitting Ctrl plus C on your keyboard. And to paste it, select the rest of the photos and hit Ctrl plus V. I would like to mention one more thing when it comes to the presets there. There is one big new features. You can now import your own presets or LUTs to this software. Here I have a whole bunch of LUTs I created quite recently, actually, the past winter. Look how simple it is to import all that. Another very important feature that has been added is the ability to remove glare on the glasses. Here are two photos I have pulled out from my archive that have lots of glare. Let's test this. I'm going to enable it all the way to see how well it has removed it. I think it looks great. Let's test another photo. Mm -hmm. 
This one is a little bit harder because there is simply this dark area here. It did quite a good job though. I would still go in and fix this area further. A lot of photographers will be happy to hear that tethered shooting has been also added. So I've got here my little Canon um, M6 Mark II. I'm gonna connect it to the, my laptop and see the preview we are going to get. And as you can see, my Canon is here. What is really important here that you can actually enable capture effect settings where you can already select your preset. So once you take the photo, it will already show the preset built in. So you can see the final look straight up. That I find really cool. And then it's going to save it to wherever you want. For those who haven't heard about this software yet and are wondering about the pricing, there is no subscription. The software has free access to all features that are being periodically updated. So you can download it, you can import the photos, do all the adjustments, you can see how it all works. What they are offering is a credit system. You only pay for exports. One credit means one photo. Each credit costs between 0.4 to 0.7 cents, depending on the package you selected. So for example, if I'm going to deliver 20 fully edited photos to the client, I'm going to pay only $1.40 if I'm going to go with the lowest package. If you want to test the software yourself, the link is below the video in the video description. There is also a special bonus there. Give it a thumbs up if you found this video informative and don't forget to subscribe for more. See you in the next video. Ciao. Ahoy.